Yeah, well, so the, basically, the both men and women do deceive. Um, so we have uh, the modern cultural invention of online dating, which you know was little used ten years ago and virtually absent twenty years ago. Uh, and people do lie, but they lie in predictable ways. They lie in ways that attempt to embody the mate preferences of the person they're trying to attract. And so men do lie. They deceive about their income, their status. So they exaggerate their income by about 20%. Uh, they, they, uh, they add, they tack on about two inches to their height. So if they're five ten, they round up to six feet. Um, so they that's hilarious. I'm five foot ten, and I would I never ever ever round it up to be like I'm six foot tall. Like I don't know. I just never. The only thing I do lie about in dating apps is age, just because I know chicks will just by default just kind of like filter out. Just how I filter out grandmas that are like you know, thirty five plus. Like sorry, grandma. Um, but you know, it's a different kind of lie. But with them. <laughs> I don't know, man. Lying about your height is like, or, or guys who like lie about their weight and you show up, you're fat. I'm like, what are you even thinking? Oh, it's funny. Girls so, put up with that. You have accepted to the funny. truth. Okay, a subscriber. Let's see who that is. Shout out to somebody, Murray. Thank you so much. Kind of cut off there. Oh, I can look at OBS. Oh, it disappeared. Fuck it, yellow. They don't like if they're five ten. They don't say that they're gigantic, but they they kind of round it up in the more desirable direction. Uh, women tend to deceive about weight. So they tend to shave about 15 pounds off of their reported weight. And, and both sexes post photos that are not truly representative of what they actually look like. So they might. Bro, these, these chicks have lost their minds, bro. I'm telling you, as the year has gone on, I've seen chicks. I've seen a girl that I met, right? She's a little bit of a chubby bunny. And her Instagram, like, clearly is warping her waist to look way skinnier than it is i'm just like do you realize people are going to show up and be disappointed like who are you doing this for yourself or like because we can tell the difference you know it's, even doctors are coming up with this they're saying people are developing uh something called snapchat dysmorphia because snapchat came out with the filters first and foremost right and then people so many of these young teen girls are putting all these crazy fucking filters on and it's you know it's it's, it's scrambling the eggs upstairs. Post photos of uh, themselves when they were younger, or they're even advice um, uh, tips on how to create the best selfie of the best angle that will maximally, you know, enhance what you look like. Or, or just doctoring of photos, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. photoshopping, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and one of the things um, uh, about it, now you say like, well, do people find out? Of course, people, people do find out. I mean, I'll just give you one story about a colleague of mine who was doing is a male who's doing internet dating, and he picked only women who self-describe as sevens on the one to seven on attractiveness, so the most attractive so as self-reported. And so, and so he went out with this one woman, and she was missing her front teeth. And he, he said, well, call me picky, but missing her front teeth, and she thinks she's like the top of attractiveness. He was a little... Uh, and, then, and again, like uh, when we did that one video covering the dudes who like ask all the random girls, like, rate yourself on one to ten. Where do you rate yourself? And the girls would also be like, oh, 10, 10, 10, 10. We're all 10, 10 across the board. We're, all, we're just perfect. We're the best ever. Hilarious. I'm um, uh, disappointed about that. And women, of course, are disappointed. They, they meet a guy who they think is this physically fit, you know, athletic guy. And he comes up, he's, you know, 300 pounds and overweight. Uh, so people, people do find out. And, and so, and there are some internet dating sites have um, kind of a vetting of the accuracy of uh, something. So some things you can look up through public records and, does this guy have a criminal record, for example? Is he is he on a? Or you can just go through her Instagram and be like, wait a minute, this girl's been to Milan, Dubai, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Paris, London, and she's alone in all these photos. Wait a minute, and then the music starts playing. And you're like, wait a minute. This was from 52 weeks ago. This was from 64 weeks ago. That was 78 weeks ago. This one's 124 weeks ago. That's six cities, six locations, six Instagram story highlights. And there's not a single man posted at all. Nor is there anybody in the pictures at all. There's not a girlfriend. 
There's not a guy friend. There isn't a group of them. So wait a minute. Did this girl just go out there by themselves? Are they this much of an avid traveler? It doesn't seem to make up any sense. She told me that she only had a 10 body count. But there's at least 20 cities here on this fucking Instagram profile. I think I've been lied to. <laughs> Oh man, the whole facts is real, guys. Show me the whole facts. Uh, you know, a sexual um, offenders uh, a website. Uh, so, so there's some things you can verify. But what I tell people is, you you really have to meet the person and interact. And, you know, because the, be, be, in part because of the deception, but also because what happens with internet dating is that the phys the photograph tends to overwhelm all the other cues, and all the other cues are written statements, and we weren't really evolved to process written statements, um, but we were evolved to respond to physical cues. But, uh, and men tend to attend to the visual cues much more than women. So women in their mate selection, they have olfactory cues. So what does the guy sound like? His vocal qualities, uh, uh, that's uh, auditory cues, uh, but olfactory cues, what does he smell like? And so women have a more acute sense of smell than and that's another thing too, just so you guys know, when a woman is really deeply attracted to you, she will really be totally enamored in your smell. They'll just be genetically drawn to it. Somebody said that's the exorcist theme. No, no, that's not the exorcist theme. That's L's theme, L from Death Note. You know, he, every time in Death Note when he's having like these deep critical thinking sessions, he... um that music playing. And that's when I was kind of reacting. I was doing like my L impersonation. Love Death Note. Personally, I hated L. I loved when fucking, spoiler alert, I loved when Light killed him. I was just like, fuck yeah, die, you sack of shit. I just loved how evil and calculating fucking, you know, cunning Light was. And I loved, speaking of women who are enamored and totally love with you, my dream girl is Misa from Death Note with the way she was just like totally crazily in love with him. That is a turn on. And she's like, if I find out another girl is after you, I'm going to kill her. I was like, that's fucking hot. That's hot. That's the level of, ded that's the level of dedication I want in my life. Okay. It's going to off somebody for me. <laughs> then men do. I like, I want, I want the Harley Quinn. I want the Misa Misa. You know what I mean? That's the dedication I want. I, I don't deserve anything less, and neither do you. If you work for it, are you maximizing money muscles game frame? You tell me. You know if you're not. You know if you are. You know your worth, boys. And, um, and so if the guy doesn't smell right, even if he embodies all the other qualities women want, that's a deal breaker. Uh, and, and so I encourage people just, you know, stop with the 100 texts back and forth or messaging and meet a person for a cup of coffee and interact. And then you'll, you know, you'll get a more accurate beat on the person. And then, of course, some qualities you can't assess even with a, with a half-hour interaction. You can tell a lot, but things like emotional stability are things that have to be assessed over time. And so one of the things that I advise people to do, and I'm not in the advice-giving business, but people ask me all the time. Sure. Once they find out what I study, they say, well, Tom, I got this problem. Can you give me advice? And, but one of the things to assess things like emotional stability, which is absolutely critical in long-term mating, uh, is to do something like go on a trip together. Take, take a vacation and where you're even in an unfamiliar environment where you're, you have to cope with things that you're not familiar with. And um, as opposed to uh, an environment where it's very predictable. And, and so you, you get a greater exposure because one of the, one of the hallmarks of emotional instability is uh, how they respond to stress. Mm -hmm. So emotionally unstable people tend to have a long latency to return to baseline after a stressful event. And so this is the sort of information. And, and that's really true too. And again, going back to the pair bonding, uh, the mate, you know, emotional stability being something important for you guys. A lot of modern women too, right? They don't have a lot of emotional stability and they don't have emotional stamina. If there's any problem in the relationship, they've conditioned themselves as like we talked about, Paul and myself, Apex Mindset on the last episode of streaming on YouTube, where if a conflict arises or there's some kind of problem in the relationship, they're just quick to fucking check out and start looking for other men. And they don't really stick it with you. And that's not a good quality to have in a long-term mating partner. 
like you're going to want a woman who will stick it out with you. Cause what if something happens to you? What if you get some kind of terminal illness or something along those lines, right? Has she proven to stick it out with you in the past or has she given up when the going gets tough? Was she wrong about something? And instead of admitting that she was wrong and apologizing, going feral and going off and hopping on that next stick. Hmm? Emotional stability is really, really, really important. Because I know women get a lot of bad rap, like, oh, none of these bitches are emotionally stable. But I'm telling you, the more dicks a girl checks, I'm telling you, it fries their brain. It fucks them up emotionally. It emotionally ruins them. So you can't have somebody that's emotionally unstable in your life, man or woman, but let alone the fucking person that's the most important part you're going to choose in your entire life, which is your life mate. No, no, no. Not okay. Information you can't get on a coffee date. You know, you can only get by assessing it over time. Well, somebody whose laboratory studies stress and tools to combat stress, I, um, that's great. It's yet more incentive for people to develop uh, self-regulatory mechanisms uh, yeah. for themselves. Um, I'm guessing many of the uh, features of deception in this context uh, were present long before internet dating. Um, and so is it, it's somewhat dark to think about, but is, um, is deception built into this dance that we call mate selection and has it been built in for a long time? Or is this, um, or is this something that you think has emerged more as people uh, are approaching each other through these electronic uh, yeah. based mediums. Yeah, I, I mean, some forms of deception have been there uh, for a long time over human evolutionary history. So one form of deception, which we haven't mentioned is deception about whether you're interested in a long-term committed relationship or a short-term hookup. And so there's deception about that, especially on the part of men. So men who are interested, like on Tinder, uh, it has been reported, although Tinder denies this, there's been reported that something like 30% of the men on Tinder are either married or in long-term committed relationships, and they're looking for something on the side. But uh, the uh, in terms of successfully attracting a man on the side, the men, uh, it has been reported, although Tinder denies this, there's been reported that something like 30% of the men on Tinder are either married or in long-term committed relationships, and they're looking for something on the side. That is 1,000% control. That's 1,000% true. Guys that are on dating apps, Guys in relationships, women just have to get over it as well, okay? Like, all that internalized hoeing that women do, you got to leave that to the man. And you, like, your cross to bear is just looking the other way and making shit happen, okay? You would think women collectively would come together and be like, oh, wait, like, majority of these dudes cheat. Is there a universal cause for this? No, all men are shit. Men are trash. Fuck all men. Oh, Okay. But you're going to go right back to the guys, aren't you? Because that's what you do. Isn't it?